Moving out of care and into independent living is a big move. You should know what your rights are, what to expect and what you're entitled to. The average age of young people leaving care in Scotland is under 17, compared to 25 for those living at home. All the young people in this film are at various stages of leaving care or are now living independently. By sharing their own experiences with you, we hope you realise that there are many different routes to independent living, but with the right support and guidance, it should be a positive experience. Do you like them? I do. It's nice here. Why is it nice? It's like staff are nice and they've like made it nice, so it's like not just like a children's home, like it's my house and it's like homely and that's why I like it. How does the thought of leaving here and moving in on your own, how does that make you feel? That's quite like, that'd just be weird. Like moving out here and actually like living on my own. That's like scary to think that. But it'll be good also like to have like my own my own place, my own space. To do like my own thing, because like sometimes it's annoying here with like younger kids. When do you think you're gonna move on and sort of move into your own place? Well, it depends how long it takes. Hopefully the end of this year or starting next year. You move into your own place? Well, hopefully. That's what I'm planning to do. And how old will you be when you move? 17 or 18. How does the, the thought of living by yourself, how does that make you feel? Well, I'm excited but I'm scared to be alone all the time and like not having like people around me and people I care about all the time. And well, right now I'm, I'm still staying in care home but I'm um, just waiting in a flat. I'm waiting on one like pot of up or whatever or waiting on them finding one for me. Like I'm excited but sad at the same time because I've stayed in a good home for seven years so it's like my, my own house. Um, don't really want to leave but I'm excited at the same time because I've grown out of it and I just want to have my own place and do my own things and stuff like that. Soon I will have to be looking about like through care after care and moving out here. I don't really, not fun for like I think about or like want to think about leaving here. I can actually like not imagine the day I leave here. I've been pieces. <laughs> Every young person leaving care should complete pathways. Pathways is the process of assessing, planning and reviewing a young person's through care and after care support needs. The views of a young person must be taken into account when you're leaving care and when your pathways assessment and plans are being made. What is a pathway plan? Well, I'm just starting to do it. So in the next couple of weeks I'll do my pathway planning and then I'll be doing independent living and stuff, so... There's seven areas in the pathway plan and we look at house and what your needs are, what your responsibilities are about education or careers, uh, where you would like to live, family, work, money, so there's a whole host of kind of different sections to it that you answer which gives the people within the through care after care team a better idea about where you are and what support you might need when you move on to independent living. Pathways isn't always the, uh, that all, isn't always done the right way, I mean there's a lot of people that have started their pathways but haven't finished it, that have already moved out and got their own accommodation and the pathways is, the pathways is just left and it's it's a bit outward because pathways need to be done before you leave care it's not a, it's not the case about leaving care and they're not done they need to be done and because it, it's it's basically it's a legal document a legal document that you need to do before you leave care i've done my pathways but i've not finished them and it's just like booklets where like you talk about your life and like what's happening and stuff like that and what you want to do with your life and just general stuff. You talk about moving on and stuff like that and budgeting and just like everyday day to day skills like independent stuff like doing your own washing, cooking and stuff like that. So right now you're in the transition of moving? Yeah, I'm in the transition just now. When I started doing the process about two years ago, 
I done I done some pathway planning with uh, some of the workers, and done some cooking, uh, and some budgeting. I've been staying at my aunt's for about two months now. I'm finding it a lot harder than what I thought it was going to be. I had somebody to wake me up in the mornings. I had my meals keep all my meals cooked for me, and it, from going to that to making my own meals and waking myself for God stuff, it's quite a reality shock. The National Care Standards, care homes for children and young people, are there to protect you and to help you understand what level of care you're entitled to. Standard 17, Moving On, is about moving on from care. It tells you how you'll get encouragement, help and guidance from staff about living more independently. I don't know. I think as long as young people are aware of their rights, um, that they're aware of that they're entitled to a service, um, and that they're being supported and that they're entitled to support, and that if things aren't going the way they should, then they're also entitled to complain, and that there's a process for that. I think for that, a young pe that's another young person to be dealing with, along with everything else that's going on in their life. The national care standards are obviously there. It's a way to make sure that young people are getting what service that they require. And it's about um, kind of benchmarking what you offer young people, making sure that each young person is treated the same and it's to a standard that's acceptable um, within the Scottish kind of executive outline the national care standards, but it's not something that young people are really familiar with when they come into care. They have much more kind of pressing things on their minds about kind of their life and, you know, their experiences that they've had. Under the Children's Scotland Act 1995, your local authority has a legal responsibility to do the following. If you come off your supervision requirement after your official school leaving date, every local authority has to provide aftercare support up to your 19th birthday. Your local authority can also continue to provide support up to your 21st birthday and can continue into your 20s if you're continuing education or training. Uh, I was in care for since seven year old. Um, been through a few foster families, didn't work out. Um, after that, pretty much moved into children's homes and got all the support and help from there. Um, even had a wee spell in secure unit as we'll say, secure care. So you were, so you were 16 when you left? Care all together. System. Yeah, yeah, I left care when I turned 16. I got myself independent, uh, got myself a job with help with the social work, funnily enough. Um, after that, uh, pretty much just on and off the work market, as I say. How old were you when you moved um, into your old place? Um, I was 17. Yeah, I was 17. I'm now a single mum. Staying in the house on my own with just me and my daughter. How did that make you feel when you were Scared. Why was it scared? Because I knew there wasn't going to be anybody there. I was going to be on my own. And obviously I was pregnant when I moved out, so... Which made me even more scared. What age do you actually have to leave the system? It, I suppose it depends on the person if they're ready or not. But personally, my opinion, it should be up to 21 because there's not, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of young people out there as well that are still, that are in a, a family environment that are leaving home at, say, 25 or 30. So we should maybe up it to the, to the 20 stages. So we're not always rushing young people to move out because there's always, the, there's always a barrier when you move out and you find it hard to get past that barrier. So maybe we should do a bit more work on up the age to actually leave care. Kids nowadays aren't moving out to like at least 24. Because there's no way there, there's, it's so hard to get jobs and stuff like that these days and to get money you need to have money to have your own flat and stuff like that. And 18, 16 is a really young age, it's not a good age to move out. It's too young. 18 as well is too young, I think. I think 20, 20 and above is a good, good age. If you're 100% sure that you are ready to move on, make sure you have proper support and guidance. 
your through care worker or local authority can tell you what sport you can get now and in the future. What um, advice um, and help are you giving to, to leave and get set up on your own? Um, I get a lot of support, I get help with like, organising things, like moving my stuff, like getting my electricity and all that switched on, help with money and stuff, like how to get money. I think I got the right amount of help and the right support for people. Some people, I think some people have a problem with asking for help. I know how hard it is sometimes just to ask for help. Just to go like, oh, I'm struggling with this. Could you help me? Sometimes it's just a bit, it's, it's hard. Yeah, I still get uh, support for you, for you care. Um, I need the support. I wouldn't just like to get abandoned. Uh, you know, you get your own tendency, they kind of leave you to be on your own, but I've asked through care for still to be there for support, um, for help with, if I've got problems with bills or something, I can just go on the phone to through care and they're there to support me. So, I'd rather have it that way and being left alone, because I think that's a lot more stress put on me. Um, my social worker isn't, isn't really interested when I turned 19, she basically said the only contact I'll be having with you is uh, phone contact. And uh, I haven't really spoke to her since then. I've spoke to other members of social work, but that's about that. Maybe, like, maybe there's other young people out there that need more help than I do. But even at that, I still need the support. And just to have phone contact with a social worker isn't isn't really substantial. It's I need a lot more than that, and what somebody to talk to. I mean, I can't always I can't always talk to friends and family. Maybe I'm just being selfish, but I, I I do think that I should have more, a bit more contact than just phone calls. What support um, do you get at the minute? My through care aftercare worker and my social worker. What do you through care, aftercare and uh, social worker, what do they do for you? They check if, um, how things are going, if I need anything, and if I, if I do need anything, they'll do what they can to help me or support me if they need. Do you get enough support or do you need more? Yeah, I get enough support. Uh, I know they're only a phone call away and they tell me any time if I need to speak to them, even if it's just a chat, I can give them a call. What, what help were you given or support when you moved into your own flat, in your own house? Um, I was given a lot of support actually. A member of staff used to come and see me, make sure I was getting on okay. They helped me to get stuff for my house and they were just there. And I knew if I needed them or I couldn't sleep, I knew I could pick up the phone and phone them and they wouldn't mind. If you could change one aspect of your experience and go to the system, what would that one thing be? More, um, because when I was living in support accommodation, there was a lot of, there was supposed to be like a weekly checkups. You're supposed to have like a sport worker or something. And mine fell sick, apparently. And she wasn't there and nobody told me what was happening. So I wasn't getting any support. You're entitled to get suitable accommodation that takes into account your specific needs. A place to live near family, work or education, and not an unsuitable bed and breakfast, hostel accommodation, or an area you don't feel safe. What do you think would be the best part though, about having, having your own place? I don't know. I actually don't know. I couldn't. I don't know. Like... That would just be like, I don't know, like 18, because like, my friends who are 18, like don't even have like live on their own, they still live with their parents and stuff, but it'd just be weird, like living on my own. It's weird. It's quite scary to think of that, actually. <laughs> I don't know, I was 17. But I ended up uh, applying through, through career aftercare to live on supported accommodation. And I'd done that for about six months. It was good, because it was kind of a, 
it was a stepping stone because if I just went from foster care straight into normal housing, it was, I reckon it would have been a lot harder because there's obviously things that you needed to learn about like budgeting and cooking and kind of looking after your own, your own stuff really. How did you feel when you were 16 and you left? I, was, I felt like I was myself. Um, I felt I was a bit free, liberated, but then I felt also lost because I didn't know what to do. I always had someone looking after me or helping me, and it was, so it was pretty difficult. How did you feel when you first moved into your flat? I was a mess. Couldn't stop crying. I was terrified. But it was exciting at the same time, but it was more scary that, rather than exciting. Why was it scary? No. I was in here for three years. And there's always so many people in the house and going from so many people in the house to just me. It was scary. How does it feel to have your own place? It feels good, but it's hard work. You kind of miss home. You don't really realise how much, how much easier it is when you live at home. Like you'd come in from school, you'd have your tea for you at five o'clock. You can get up in the morning and you'd have your breakfast there. It's free. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> You're entitled to financial support during the transition from care to independence. This may include a grant to help you set up your new home. So when you moved in here, was it furnished or did you have to furnish it? Oh, it was unfurnished. It was unfurnished? Yeah. I was lucky enough to have a, a housing starter kit, pretty much. They assigned someone to help me shop for goods like plates, knives, toaster, pots, pans, cooker, washing machine, Microwave, everything. How did you feel on that first night? First night, I wasn't really too happy. I never really had much. Uh, I had was my bed, my cooker and stuff, but I had a little bit of chairs or anything. I did it, so I got a sun lounger off and threw a gear worker. You get a, you get a lot of money to furnish your, your house and buy all your essentials and stuff like that you need. And you get, it depends on your circumstance, like, because I'm stuck at college, my rent gets paid for me. And um, I have to pay everything else myself. Buy my own food and stuff like that, and my own clothes and all that. When I wasn't getting paid from the college, or if it was some holidays, I was getting... Pretty much, if you were on benefits, it was um, £55 a week that I used to get from the social work. I used to put it into my bank every Thursday. And now... Well, if I properly go to college full time, then I should be getting my bursary, which is £75 a week. Where's my income come from? Uh, I get a college bursary, which is uh, £281 a month, which isn't, it's better than what I was getting. I was signed on a job centre, which is £50 a week, so it's no, it's better. How do you afford to live? Uh, it's benefits. Um, that's why I'm dying to get a job because I couldn't live off benefits. So it's hard work being a single parent and trying to live off benefits as well. So really hard work. How do you manage your money? Is there any sort of techniques you use or things you've learned? Or, or do you not manage your money? How do you find it? Well, when, like, when I, I worked in a job for three years and then I got sacked from it, and then I found it a bit harder, obviously, because you learn you had so much more money compared to getting so much, like, little from, like, council and stuff. So I managed by just paying off, buying everything I had to be, like, essential first, like, gas, electric, food for the week, and made sure I had everything stocked up. And then whatever I have left, I can go out, maybe go to a cinema, and that's all you can really do with 50 pound a week. What does the term independent living mean to you? Staying on my own, paying bills on my own without any help, bringing in money on my own. 
putting food on the table, looking after a house on my own, looking after myself without any help, not having support around me as much as what you did when you were in care, not having somebody there 24 seven. Being able to um, do everything on your own, not being able to rely on other people, just independent basically, like, do you know, just being able to do things yourself and stuff like that. It means quite a lot, it's like, if you're independent, if you can do stuff for yourself, you don't, you, you don't need to depend on a lot of people, maybe for some stuff, but, um, so it's good to have a bit of independence, you can say, oh, I've done that myself, I don't need help. Um, it's quite a good feeling, you know, you've done it yourself. What advice would you give to someone who's about to go through the transition into the place? What advice would you give me? Work out where your supports are, so you know if you're struggling, or if you need help, or even if you just need somebody to talk to, you know where to go. Take Take the support when you've got it. If you've got the chance, take it. I mean, although we're talking about leaving care, um, through care and uh, pathways is very good because you get you get that stability for furniture and help to find your own accommodation. And you, I, I suppose it's a bit about it's it's not going to cost you anything because you're entitled to it. And if you're entitled to it, then take it. Number one, I'd say, would be don't rush it. Take your time and make sure you've got someone there to help you, even if it's just friends, family, or some sort of support from a organisation. It's not good. It's, I'd say it's, if you went through it alone, like totally alone, then it'd be hard. I would uh, just say we uh, interact with um, as many services as possible. Because it's the only way you're going to move on in life if you just, just put your hand up and say, nah, I'm no, I'm not interacting, then uh, you're just putting a blocker on for the future. Okay, so tell me what you know about what's going to happen when it's time for you to leave. Well, the through care after thing that my social worker was telling me about was like, she just said, like, took a year for like to sort house, housing and stuff. So, yeah. But, I was like, my plan was to stay until I was 18, like the summer, when I finished school, and then look at moving into my own place, so like housing would be sorted by then. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to live in like my own place and still be going to school, so yeah. That's like next year in the summer, that's really weird. A year's like nothing, that'll fly past. So when do you think you're going to move on and sort of move into your own place? Well, it depends how long it takes. Hopefully, the end of this year or the start of next year. You'll move into your own place? Well, hopefully. That's what I'm planning to do. And how old will you be when you move? 17 or 18. How does it feel to have your own place? It feels good, but it's hard work really hard work, especially at 19 year old Lassie, it's really hard work. Thinking back now, I don't know, I don't know if I regret leaving, but in a way I kind of do, but in a way I don't, because I like kind of the freedom and the space that I have now, but I don't like the fact, I don't, it's not that I don't like it, it's, it was a lot easier. Because now you kind of need to think, oh, I'm going to need to buy something for tea and breakfast and meals throughout the day and I need money for electric, I need money for gas, I need money for if you've got any debt or everything. It's just kind of a bit overwhelming and you don't think about things like that. At the start it was a wee bit scaled but it, it's fine now, I like it. I like having one place. Remember that it's always you, your decision, and it's always down to you what you want to do. I would just like to say to interact with all the services there, um, find out your rights and 
hopefully I take the right path and progress through your life at your own stage. Just want to start and like start living my own life and doing what I want to do. Can't wait. <laughs> Leaving care is your decision and should be done at your pace. You should know what your rights are, what to expect and what you're entitled to.